Hi, everybody. I fell ill, yeah. <laughs> now we see you again. <laughs> you Sorry, I don't have both screens on, so I didn't even realize that I had disappeared. I was chatting away on my side. Oh, uh, no worries. Um, so let's go ahead and reshare your presentation to make sure everybody can see that, and then I will go behind the scenes again. Okay, great. Sorry about that. And I'll make sure that everything's working before you go. Okay, so I'm not sure if, how much you guys heard, but I was. We did not hear any of it, so I would start oh, from the it. beginning. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna have to speed up even more. Okay, so we talk about the plague of disruption um, and what is affecting supply chain um, when it comes to the risk of receiving uh, inventory and in time. Um, the uh, uh, Baltimore Bridge, as you know, is, if you look at that picture, everybody recognizes. Um, as much as it wasn't a very significant. Um, uh, sort of like what we would call a black swan event when it comes to to uh, inventory like uh, COVID would have been. Um, it did have some significant effect on small and medium sized businesses, uh, not so much the larger businesses, um, and specifically in industries like uh, automotive and agriculture. Um, but at the same time, there was a drought in Panama and there was conflict in Gaza that was affecting the uh, Panama Canal and Suez Canal. And these are the type of things that we have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis or customers need to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis um, when they are uh, um, try working with the supply of, of inventory. And that's really one of the key things that we want to be able to look at or be agile enough to adjust to uh, when those things happen. So the, uh, let me just get on with this. Okay, so the contributors to bad inventory health really those longer lead times that are caused by those type of disruptions in supply but there are also things that multiply uh, um, those risks in the supply chain when it comes to disruptions things like rising costs increased stock hours that have effect on a, on a business um, the discrepancies in supply and demand and demand patterns changing rapidly um, based on things like inflation or or changes in the market uh, and then also labor shortages and those uh, all contribute to what we call risk in the supply chain. Um, and unfortunately, spreadsheets and ERPs aren't built to be able to calculate that risk or be agile enough to, to um, mitigate that risk in any way. And that's really one of the, the most important things around NetStock and how we approach inventory health um, that helps with, with uh, customers that are dealing with these things. Right, so these are the symptoms. If you're out there and you're working with inventory, uh, poor forecasting, a lot of customers are doing their forecasting in spreadsheets, uh, moving average forecasts that are, don't really pick up things like seasonality or upward downward trends and um, uh, sporadic items and a whole bunch of uh, type of forecasting that needs to be done. So forecast, poor forecast accuracy, and that's really where everything starts. If you have a poor forecast, you can't predict uh, what you're gonna be selling in the future or consuming in the future. It's very difficult to plan on that. Uh, the second thing from that really also a lot of our customers or most of our customers say the major challenges they have is the time that they spend on getting to that reorder point. So they start with that forecasting. They have to now collate that information, make sure that the forecasts are as accurate as possible. Very difficult to do in a spreadsheet. Um, and then also take those items, understand things like MOQs, uh, the different units that need to be purchased, the suppliers that they need to be purchasing from, and then bring all of that together to be able to place an order and capture that order in Acumatica. Um, so what we do is we, we look at automating a lot of those processes so that you don't spend so much time on the ordering process um, and we can have order recommendations uh, at, at your fingertips at a push of a button. And then of course, what happens if you don't have the right orders and your, your, your forecasting is poor? And as I said, these all build on top of each other is that you end up having stock outs and typically of the items that are most important to the business and significant excess and typically in the items that are least important to the business. So those are the symptoms and I'm sure everybody's dealing with those to, to a, a more or lesser uh, extent, um, but those are really the things that we're trying to look at and, and the symptoms that we're trying to, to um, identify so that we can go and find what the root problem is. Right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit around how we do this, how we create these uh, treatment plans um, and the, the process that we go through, we have a look at your medical history, we make assessments on that uh, historical data so that we can um, help plan against that. The first thing that we do is we create health insurance for every single item in every location, depending on their own health profile. 
and then we create a treatment plan for each of those uh, items in every location um, so that we can see where we're headed to try and keep that inventory as healthy as possible. We create daily prescriptions um, that uh, we uh, for medication to make sure that um, the items are there in time uh, and that they are there for customers when they require them or for manufacturing or for distribution. Um, we're tracking progress to make sure that we're staying on track and that we're heading towards healthy inventory. And then we also have a medical assistant, 24-7 uh, AI medical assistant that'll help us with that. So that's really the treatment plans. And I'm going to talk through that with you. Okay, so the first thing is the medical history. We'll pull your, your um, historical sales and information from the ERP, from Acumatica, and we'll use that in our forecasting engine to create a forecast, a 12-month or 24-month forecast, depending on, on what, what's needed. Um, and this is all about increasing the accuracy of that forecast, because as I said, this is where it all starts. The more accurate this forecast is, the better we're able to predict in the future, the better we're able to plan, and the better we're able to buy to make sure that we don't have too much or too little. Um, we have a forecasting engine that will buy, find the best fit forecast and create that forecast for every item at every location automatically. Um, it will also do things like outlier elimination. We can see if there's peaks over here. It'll do peak replacement. Um, it'll uh, compensate for lost sales on stock out days to make sure that the forecast is as accurate and as smooth as possible, not overstated or understated into the future. But we'll also track that forecast. We'll look historically at that forecast and see how well we've done, whether we're over forecasting or under forecasting. And we'll bring um, those exceptions to your attention if there are uh, forecasts that we see uh, are anomalies and ask you to intervene. We give you the, the ability to then intervene on those forecasts uh, based on your product knowledge or market knowledge to ensure that those forecasts are even more accurate. So accurate forecasting is really what this is all about, um, assessing the historical data and helping build a more accurate forecast so that we can plan from there. The next thing we do is we're gonna assess the inventory. So not all inventory is equal. Uh, we're going to find where the um, more important items are that Pareto, that 80-20, we can see over here, we create this nine block matrix. Green items are the bread and butter items of the business. The red items are the slow moving, uh, you know, perhaps want to rationalize out of that product range, not much contribution to the business. We highlight slow moving expensive items so that we can deal with those differently and fast moving inexpensive items. And this is a automatic classification and it is a, a, a continuous classification. So items might move from one block to the next. We will automatically reclassify those items every day to ensure that we understand where the more important items are and we can focus our healthcare and our health insurance in those areas as well. So that's one of the factors in the health insurance is um, the importance of that item in, uh, in, in the business. Okay, so we're going to assess the items and we're gonna understand the importance of each item and uh, based on that, what type of health insurance is required. Um, another factor in health insurance is the risk. And this is what I was talking about um, in the calculations. Uh, we, we have a dynamic safety stock calculation based on any of the changes that happen. Supply chain is a, is a living, breathing thing, and we need to be able to adapt as we go along. So what we do is we measure the risk, both, both inbound and outbound. So in other words, how reliable is the supply of this item? Are they delivering in time? Uh, are they delivering in full? Um, are they on average delivering late? Uh, we calculate the average lead time and we will increase or decrease safety stock based on those calculations. Typically, if we're um, delivering later than what we're planning for, on average, we will increase safety stock to avoid stock outs in the future. Um, if they're delivering early or over delivering, we will decrease safety stock. And the same with the, with the forecast. We have a look at the demand. Um, we look at our forecast and how that, um, how we were able to, how well we were able to forecast and how accurate that forecast was. And we apply a risk against that. If we're under forecasting on average, obviously that uh, um, could lead to stock out. So we will buffer safety stock um, so we can take those risks into consideration. And the, the, the reason really why we keep safety stock or this health insurance really is the risk of customers buying more than what we planned and suppliers not delivering in time or in full. So we take that into consideration and we calculate the dynamic safety stock that's calculated on a daily basis as well. We then from there, once we understand what the health insurance is, and that's the bottom part over here up to um, that uh, purple part over there, um, we then calculate and create a plan for every single item in every location, calculating the safety stock, calculating your um, reorder point and your order up to and your maximum, and then planning purchase orders into the future based on those policies. 
And that's really what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to go into the software and just show you one of those plans uh, with an actual item. So here we can see the item. Um, there's a lot of information here, but just to give you a, a bit of a show on this, um, this information is coming out of Acumatica, so we can see, uh, you know, selling and, and cost prices, uh, stock on hand, all the information that we require over there, the uh, supplier that we're purchasing it from, any groupings we'll bring in there as well. At the bottom over here, um, we've created this plan. We've brought in your, your historical sales and created the forecast over there. We've calculated your optimal safety stock based on risk factors. We've created, uh, based on your policies, what your ideal min max levels and, and reorder points should be. And we have a, a, a insight into what your inventory position is right now, taking stock on hand, uh, customer orders uh, to get to an available stock level and inbound orders to get to a net stock position or your um, uh, future max, what we're, what, what we're on. And then we'll compare those two and you'll see over here, this gray area is our optimal stock levels. And that, as you can see, is dynamic. Uh, you know, in high season, let's say that's flu season, we'll be holding a lot more medication. And uh, in those uh, low trough seasons over there, we're going to be holding less inventory as well. Um, so we calculate your optimal stock levels throughout the, the next, well, and this is only uh, 360 days, but we can do it for two years as well. And every day, day by day, we're calculating what the closing stock, what the min max level should be, and all that type of stuff. So that gray area over there is my optimal inventory level for this item. And we do this for every single item in every location. We're then going to have a look at things like the, we can bring in those sales orders. So there's the little green items over there or the customer orders as firm demand. Um, we can see the uh, orders. So there we go. These are orders that, we, that we're that we planning to place. Uh, firm receipts for orders that are already in. There's just one over there. And then future receipts based on those orders. If I place an order here, it'll arrive over there. If I place that order there, it'll arrive over there. And then what the closing stock is projected to be based on all of that. So we, we create this plan for every single item in every location to ensure that we in future we can stay within that gray area over there, which is our optimal safety stock or our optimal um, uh, optimal health for our inventory. And uh, if anything goes wrong with that, we'll obviously then track that um, and make sure that we that we that we do something about it. This item over here, we can see, looks quite low. Looks like it's going to stock out over there. Um, that might end up on our on our on our stockout list uh, within that lead time, um, and that will all be tracked on the dashboard. So the dashboards really are the tracking uh, mechanisms. You'll see when you log onto the application, the first thing that you'll see is the uh, dashboards, and that'll basically tell us how we're doing against the targets that we've set. Um, we can see our inventory value there against the model. We can see our uh, fill rate or availability against a target. Um, and we can see where the exceptions are. Do I have excess? Do I have stockouts? Do I have surplus orders that's going to create future excess? And do I have potential stockouts that are going to create stockouts in the future? And can I deal with those on a daily basis? So this is really tracking the progress of this health and making sure that you stay on track. Um, and then, as I said, every day under orders, we will have the prescriptions. Um, for every single supplier listed one by one. So there's no need to collate all that information. Every item that goes through its reorder point will automatically be put onto a supplier order or a production order or a transfer order uh, in, the, uh, in distribution. Um, we can just click on the order there, say create. Um, it'll bring up that order with those items listed one by one. We can see the, um, uh, the historical data being analyzed over there, the classification, um, all the units of measure, MOQs, multiples, everything's taken into consideration. Um, this order then, once we're happy with that, we can download and that'll drive back to Acumatica, uh, as I said, either as a works order or a uh, transfer order um, in manufacturing or distribution or a purchase order on supplier um, to ensure that we have the right inventory in the right place at the right time and that we stick to our um, plan, um, our health plan that we've put together, our inventory health plan. Okay, so that really is the the um, the plan for uh, execution from pulling all the information from Acumatica, um, analyzing, doing all the things that we need to do, coming up with a plan, and then executing that plan. Uh, but we also have uh, we, we built into the application a, an AI engine that'll help, and this is what our twenty four seven medical assistance is. Um, this opportunity engine will go and um, analyze within the, the, the customer's data, where there are opportunities 
um, and what to do with them. So if I go show me, they've got 14 over there. I can just keep clicking and it'll come up. Um, I can use filters to look for specific op type of opportunities that we're looking for or specific locations or whatever it is. So if perhaps we're looking for uh, overdue purchase orders in, in those locations or um, excess stock or, you know, uh, under or over forecast items, we can go and look for that. But what it'll do is it'll bring up opportunities that it finds. It'll say, in this case, that there are 3,000 units of surplus orders on this product in this location um, and that it's going to cost you 74,000 and it won't sell anytime soon. Can we delay these orders or even better cancel them as soon as possible? And it'll just bring up one opportunity after the next. It might be potential stockouts. Like I said, you can you can go and filter those. You can also teach the AI engine what was useful to you as a user specific so that it, it, it starts learning how to bring more of the opportunities that are more useful to you uh, to the forefront. So not only are we going to calculate what those optimal um, uh, uh, levels are, we'll also have an assistant to help you along the way to find opportunities where you can save a lot of money, free up cash, and also ensure that we can uh, increase profitability by making sure that the um, that the items are there and we're increasing the sales of those items as well. Okay, so that's the uh, health plan and the treatment plan that we put together. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the the outcomes. And this is um, these are statistics that we've that we've gathered from our own customer base um, and and uh, research that we've done. Um, and really, the outcomes. You know, it's difficult to say exactly what it'll be for each business. But there, there is usually um, uh, improvements in all of the kind of like symptomatic um, or symptoms that are that are highlighted over there, um, not just one at a time, like uh, reducing inventory or freeing up cash, but also increasing availability at the same time um, and um, reducing the time that it takes to be able to do that as well. So those are the treatment outcomes. Um, we've got great reviews on uh, uh, G2 as well, so, uh, and also some feedback on what we can improve. So maybe a good thing to, to reach out there and just have a look at uh, some of the reviews that we've got there from our customers and the things that we have been able to achieve with them. Um, but yeah, happy to to also, uh, if you guys want to reach out to us, uh, put you in touch with with uh, customer testimonials specifically for certain industries, um, if that if that is something that appeals to you guys as well. Uh, I'm look like I'm just past the 20 minutes, so I have ended a little bit early, but I think that's as much as I can do. Um, if there are any questions, please feel free to put them into the chat and I'll try and answer them here. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing. Aha. Here we go. Now I can see my screen. Um, I don't have my double screen where I am, so I wasn't able to read any of the questions. Any questions uh, for me, for the doctor on inventory health? Anything I can help with? <laughs> Russ. Okay, no questions. Liz? Fine, great job. Yeah, if there's no questions, you are more than welcome to uh, stick around for a minute or two and tell people head to the next sessions. If not, um, feel free to jump off and uh, people can connect with you in your expo booth. Thanks again. Great, thanks guys. Thanks for your time.